Hi, I hope you're doing well. I'm Hippiotech, and I'm recovering from an 11 hour live stream. This video is going to be a little bit different than normal. I reached out to Banggood and said I wanted to build a custom keyboard for beginners. They in turn gave me $150 to spend on their website. If you're just getting into mechanical keyboards and don't know where to start, welcome. I built this board over the course of 11 hours on a live stream. For most people, building a board like this would really only take a couple hours, and the reason why it took so long is I was having fun chatting. If you want to participate in my next live stream, make sure you get subscribed and hit that join button down below. This will allow you to use special perks in my live stream, get exclusive access to content, and support me. And overall, I'd really appreciate it. For this build, I wanted something Bluetooth that I could use as my main board for filming. So I decided to pick out the GK61XS. This is a perfect entry level 60% keyboard with Bluetooth support and split spacebar support, but we won't be using that today. If you're new to keyboard terminology, a 60% board usually doesn't have arrow keys or the F key row. The reason why I think this is such a good beginner board is because it's hot swap and doesn't require soldering to install the switches. This means that you can easily change out the switches as you want, and it's really good if you just want to tinker and don't know what switches you like the most. Speaking of switches, the switches I picked out for this build are Fecker Milk Green Switches. And no, I didn't swear, that's just the name of the brand. This is a linear switch with 45 grams of force required to actuate it, meaning it's relatively light. It's manufactured by TTC and comes in at around 36 US dollars for 110 of them. You'll only need 61 for this build. I got this switch because I hadn't seen any reviews of them yet, and I wanted to test them out myself. However, in the description, you'll see that I've linked Gateron Yellows as well, and I recommend getting those as a linear alternative. Gateron Yellows are my preferred budget switch of choice, and they're cheaper than this option as well. Comparing these to Gateron Yellows, they didn't have much spring ping, but weren't very smooth. On the live stream, I put out a poll, and everyone wanted these lubed, so I'll be lubing them later in the video. Stay tuned for that. I know that a lot of you that watch my videos are a bunch of weebs, so I picked this set out just for you. As of making this video, the set is currently on sale for $45 rather than $62, and for that price, I really recommend it. This is a Dice Sub PBT set, and it sits OEM profile. If you're gaming a lot, OEM is my preferred profile, and a lot of the gamer keyboards tend to use it. Also, Dice Sub allows them to get these really vibrant, colorful designs, and I think it's pretty awesome. Because the GK61 that we picked out has a standard layout, we don't need any special keys, so you can use almost any keycap set. Banggood has a wide variety of keycap sets, however, you have to be careful with some of them. Some of their sets are direct clones of GMK sets, and even steal the artwork. For some of the sets that's just a colorway, I can see how they can get away with it, but for the sets where they steal the designs, some might say this is pretty unethical. Next, we're going to build the GK61. This means getting it unwrapped and ready for the building process. Do not force in switch. Don't do this, or we're going to have to get out our soldering iron. That would suck. Hmm, yes, that would suck past Hippio. That would suck. Anyways, we'll tackle that bit of foreshadowing a little bit later. For this part, we're just weighing the keyboard to see how much it weighs, and it comes in at a hefty 463 grams, which is not hefty at all, it's pretty lightweight. This board is a pretty good palette for any build. It features hot swap switches, a white case, white plate, and full RGB support, as well as lube stabilizers. At the back of the board, there's no adjustable feet, however it does have some nice rubber bump-ons that stop it from sliding around your desk or mouse mat. As mentioned before, this board also uses Bluetooth and a detachable USB-C cable for charging and plugged-in use. Next, we're just going to unscrew all of the screws to get the plate out of the case. This is an entirely optional part of the building process, and we're doing this so that we can put some foam in there to dampen the sound a little bit. This case is pretty hollow, and we want to get rid of some of that. Also, keep in mind to be very, very careful when removing it from the case, as the USB-C port on some of these is improperly put in, and you can have some issues later. Uh, this is foreshadowing part two, by the way. Next, we unplug the battery from the PCB and set them both to the side. The Akko keycaps came with some foam, so we're gonna be using that to foam dampen. This is kind of just to cheapen the overall process for people. 
as I feel there's not that substantial of a difference between this and some of the cheaper foam options. This was the original foam fill that I did, and it didn't work. So then we decided to cut up all of the foam into tiny pieces and stuff it in between those tiny slots in the case. This proved to work much better and overall let the case close properly. The best way to do this would be with some adhesive sorbethane or neoprene foam. The foam that has adhesive is much better as if you wrestle around the case, you don't have to reseat all of the foam. I had to do that quite a few times and it was pretty frustrating. Some of the viewers on the stream then realized my struggle. Don't rip out the USB port. Yeah. Uh, I think we're almost there, dude. I think we are actually almost there. Oh yeah, I did do that, didn't I? Did I have to resolder that? Um, FN plus space turns Bluetooth off. And no, we are getting no connection over USB C. I could get my soldering iron out. Oh, it actually it fully snapped off. That's very entertaining. Press F to pair specs. It did snap off really, really easily. Somewhere in the process of putting the PCB back in the case, the USB-C port snapped off. This was pretty depressing to me and definitely took the wind out of my sails. Part of this was my fault for being a bit too rough with it while putting it back in. However, part of this is the fault of the board manufacturer for not having a strong enough soldering connection, as it really just snapped off. So, because the show must go on, instead of just sending this back to Banggood, I tried to fix it myself. So I got my soldering iron out, and went to town. I think we did it? I'm an absolute noob when it comes to soldering, so at first I over-soldered it, and then needed to use a solder sucker to fix my problem. But we somehow managed to get a connection, and all of the lights turned on, which surprised me and the whole entire stream. If this happens to you though, just send the board back. Next, I'm going to show you how to lube switches. This requires quite a lot of accessories, but they're really not that expensive in total, and all of them are linked down in the description. Lubing switches is really easy, but just a bit time consuming. In general, it makes the switches sound and feel better, reducing some of the scratchiness that tends to come with stock switches. To lube all the switches, you need to use a switch opener or a screwdriver, but I definitely recommend using a switch opener as it'll save your fingers in the long run. You then press down the switch on the switch opener which pops it open, and I use a bit of tweezers to do the finishing touches, or just your fingers. Usually my workflow when lubing switches is that I open up all of the switches first, and then I bag lube the springs, and then I put together all of the switches as I lube them one by one. I also decided not to lube the stabilizers for this build, because they came factory lubed, and I ran out of time. If you want to see how to properly lube them, check out the Teja Types video on it. Now, you can definitely lube each spring by hand, but I prefer this method as it saves quite a bit of time overall, and I'm relatively lazy. I put about 15 drops of super lube oil in a bag, and I tend to use the same bag over and over again. You then shake up the springs for around 30 seconds or so. This evenly coats all of the springs. And then after that, you massage them for around another 30 seconds. This will cause some of the springs to get tangled, but I found that you can detangle them pretty easily by just using a pair of tweezers and kind of dropping them. I tend to keep them on a saucer, that way they don't get anything else covered in oil. And I'm also using some switch films for these switches. Films help reduce some of the stem wobble, and I felt like these switches had a lot of it. Next, I'm going to show you how I lube my linear switches. First, you want a very light coating of Crytox 205G0 on your switches. Then, you go 1, 2, 3 strokes on each slider, flip the brush, 1, 2, 3 strokes on the other one, and then go around the world in the center of the switch. After that, I put a switch film on, and I'm just using a lubing station here to keep them from moving around too much. I don't actually like using them for the actual lubing process. I then grab a spring, put the spring in, and move on to lubing the stems. I use a stem holder to lube the stems as it makes it a bit easier with fat fingers. You then want to reapply a little bit of lube to your brush, but still keeping it very minimal. You then apply a very even coating on all sides of the stem, making sure to hit the legs if it's a linear stem. You then plop it back on, and make sure the contact side is facing the legs. And there you have it. Just repeat 61 times, and you've lubed all the switches for the board. Because I did this on stream, taking breaks to talk and chat with the viewers, 
It took around 5 hours to lube all the switches, but for you, it would probably take 2 or 3 total. With our board freshly fixed from earlier, we're now ready to apply all of the switches. Just be very careful not to press too hard, as you might pop out one of the hot swap sockets, which would mean you'd have to break out your soldering iron as well. If I had to give an impression of these switches, I'd say they're slightly worse than Gateron Yellows, and in general, I would recommend Gateron Yellows over these switches. They're just slightly too scratchy, and I really don't like how they sound on the up clack. They do, however, look really pretty, and very similar to Telios, so if you like that aesthetic but you're on a super tight budget, this could be an option for you. Moving on to the stabilizers, I didn't lube them simply because they were already factory lubed, and they suck so much that my lubing wouldn't have done too much. Next, I'm just going to put the keycaps on, and then we'll have a finished build. Overall, this building experience went pretty smoothly, except for the last part where the USB-C port broke off. If you're building this yourself, and you're super worried about that happening to you, you could always just not fill the case with foam, but I'd say go for it and just be a little bit careful when you're opening the board. Don't try and force it open like I did. And here's the final board. Overall, I'm super happy with how it looks, and I think these World Tour keycaps are awesome, and I'll probably use them on a build in the future. Thank you so much for joining my roller coaster of a build. I'm going to leave you guys with a sound test in just a minute, but first, let's wrap some things up. I'll leave affiliate links for all of the parts used in this build in the description. If you want to support the channel, click that link. Additionally, if you want to see more build videos in 2021, and maybe some more streams too, make sure you get subscribed, leave a like, and let me know what you thought in the comments. Also, that join button is really cool, and it's a new feature that you can use to support the channel. When you click that join button, you get a badge, access to super cool emotes, unreleased footage, and more. Also, you get to support my future DIY projects. Anyways, listen to the whole sound test, and thanks for watching.